Hi, it's Paul from Model Builder International. So, I was looking online for a micro sander and found one, but it was more than 100 bucks. So, I thought, no way am I making that. So, I'm going to make one of my own. So, went to Amazon, bought a few things, toothbrush included. Let's make one. Okay, so this is the equipment I'm going to need to do this. Start off, cheapest rotary toothbrush I could find, came with batteries, I think this was $12, and that's all the money is uh, Canadian. So that's $12 Canadian, this was I think $5. I bought a whole stack of these at different, um, uh, different grits for, I can't remember, it's dirt cheap, you can get these anywhere really. I think I've just chosen the ones from 1500 to 180 to use. That I stole from the wife's sewing box, just a piece of Velcro, scissors, snips, and glue gun. And that's pretty much all I'm going to need. So I'll just undo these two. Basically what I'm going to end up with is uh, five different heads, each with one of the five different grits on it. And then I can interchange them. And I can also easily, because I'm using Velcro, I can replace the grit when it wears out. So I'll open the boxes off. So step one, uh, put the batteries in, make sure it works. So that's easy enough, take that off. I've taken these out of here, put the little uh, coloured bands on just so I can tell the difference. And the first thing I'm do is cut all these nice bristles off. So you can use scissors for that, at least to start with. Um, what I've also seen people have a little bit more success with is the snips we use for cutting plastic off the sprues. Those are a little bit better, gets a little bit messy, but cut it down as low as you can. And basically there's a the beginning. And we'll just cut all these off. Okay, so that's that one pretty much down. As you can see, makes a bit of a mess. So I'm going to be doing some vacuuming later, especially when I've got the other ones done. You don't have to take it all the way down. I've seen people try and burn the last stubble off there. Um, but I'm going to use in a glue gun, glue gun, um, which is going to sort of build up over that anyway. Um, I've also seen people put a small disc of foam on here to make it a bit flexible, but I don't think we're going to need to do that. Um, so, basically cut them down as close as you can, no need to get too worried about making it perfect, just get it down there. Okay, next thing, I'm going to cut a little strip of the Velcro here, just so I can uh, trim it later. So I'll just cut that out there. Save that for using on the other ones. And here I've just got a disc of um, sandpaper. Make sure you get the ones with the fabric on the back so that the Velcro will stick to it. So I just put that on there, draw around it very roughly. No need to get excited about getting it perfect. And then quickly cut a circle out. Again, you don't have to worry about being too accurate about this. That'll do for that. Next thing, let's warm up the glue gun. Okay, so next thing I'm going to do. Put some glue onto the glue gun. Just move this over so we don't make a mess on the cutting bench. And I'm making it reasonably thick. And then I'm going to 
stick that on it. Then I'm going to wait for that to dry and then just trim it around. Okay, so glue has set, so I'll just give this a, a rough trim. Don't have to get all um, awkward about it or too detailed about it. That's that, and then I can put that on there like that to be replaced. Stick that on there. And there's a sander with 180 grit sandpaper on it. Anytime I want to, if this wears out, I just take that off, cut myself another little square or circle, put it back on there. I've got these four. I can also use again, or I could just have a box full of these little circles of different grits and mark them as such and just uh, keep swapping them. Um, the other thing, as I said, is if you wanted it, this one is pretty, um, should we say flat, there's not much, it won't adhere to the contours or something, you know, something that's round, it's just going to do the flat edge. If I wanted to, something that was softer, say a bit more like this sort of stuff, then just literally do that. Find a piece of soft foam and uh, put that underneath your Velcro and you'll have a soft one. But either way, this one will work pretty nicely. You can see already it's starting to take the, the logo off there. So that's it. That's a simple much, a simple, uh, a simple workaround for a hundred dollar um, tool that you can buy online. And this one, what, less than less than twenty dollars Canadian, so probably less than fifteen dollars US. Um, and it's as simple as that. Okay, so there's a little experiment. Here's one I've cut all the bristles off. Bristles off. There's a piece of foam. Now, I've tried this with a few different types of foam. If you use the really soft stuff, it just flattens, it doesn't contour, it doesn't do anything. Um, this seems to work about the best. Another key thing is the thickness of these. Essentially you need these paper thin for it to have any chance of working at all. These aren't really, so it doesn't work too well. But basically, there's one. I've already cut the bristles off, stick some glue on here. And I'll put a piece of foam on there. And then I'll put some glue on that as well. And then put that on there. And then we'll wait for it to set. Okay, so that's finished gluing. Then we'll get the piece of uh, sandpaper put there. Okay, so let's just see what this does. I've just got a pen here. I'll just take the cap off, make it easier. Let's see if it contours. And it does a little bit, you have to press on a bit. But it a lot will come down to using, playing with different, should we say, uh, strengths of foam. Um, and also even uh, the glue itself and a certain amount of rigidity to it and the sandpaper as well. So let's take that one off there, put that one on. Made it square this time. And let's see, see what happens this time. Yeah, this is a really uh, fine sandpaper, so it's not going to do too much. But it certainly seems to um, have an effect. You have to press on pretty hard, though. So, probably, actually for these, probably your best bet is just uh, missing out the foam and just using it as a straight, um, what, 
flat sander because working with the foam is or making it so it'll flex a huge amount is uh, going to be tricky with the amount of power that these develop and having to use the foam so probably you can try these again with uh, softer foam and things like that just to see if you can get one that contours just as well as one of one of these things does so anyway have a play that's the rough idea how to do it it's dirt cheap you can uh, make them easy enough the long neck um, makes it pretty handy for getting into places um, that's basically why I was thinking about making one of these was trying to sand a figure where I could barely get my fingertip into a place where I needed to sand but one of these will be easy enough to uh, to put in there and I can just leave it in place and just sand away to my heart's content so anyway, have fun try making one for yourself um, put a note in the uh, in the comments um, as to how you get on